for me, it has been to be that guy that does what people say can't be done, you know? And I think it started with uh, trying to please my mother and trying to please my grandmother. And they always wanted higher for me. They always wanted more for me. And it got to the point that I wanted to be something. I wanted to be somebody. And it, it made me uh, choose certain roles. It, it made me turn down certain roles. There is more than an image that I want to project. I want to be the person that is the first person there and the last person to leave. That's who I want to be because I think that the, the road to success is through commitment and through the strength to drive through that commitment when it gets hard. And it is going to get hard and you're going to want to quit sometimes, but it'll be colored by who you are and more who you want to be. Whatever you do, you want to develop technical mastery. You want to be the best at what you do. You want to master it. See, part of, of, of self-motivation is you've got to find something that gives you a strong sense of competence. Well, you become known for that. You develop a reputation of being good at doing that. You set some high personal standards for yourself. You're not competing with anybody else. You're just unfolding yourself to be the best person that you could be. That you want to give the best quality service that you can give because that is a statement about who you are. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. Because motive matters, right? And what drives us. I always tell people that there's a success formula I subscribe to, and I call it HQ, that it goes from your head to your heart to your hands. Affirm things in your head, um, but if you're not acting with your hands, there's there's something that's missing, right? There's an incongruency there. And I, I what I tell people is like, you know, check in with the second H, which is your heart, which is the symbol of like emotion, the energy of motion. And so I feel like that's the fuel that fuels the car that gets you to take action for something. And I do believe what got me through it is figuring out what my why was. But if you want to become self-actualized, if you want to live a life of meaning, the first thing you have to do is become independent of the good opinion of other people. The first thing you have to do. And the second thing is to become detached from the outcome. Those were the two, no, the top two criteria for, for highly functioning people. Independent of the good opinion of other people, which is exactly the opposite of what we learned in the ambition phase of our life. And detachment from outcome, which is the other opposite, you know, the, it's, instead of, it's like, we don't go out there to try to make, you know, to, to do something to make a lot of money. That's, you know, detachment from outcome is like, you don't do it because of how much money you're going to make. You do it because there's something inside of you here that is telling you, this is what you're here for. This is what you have to create. This is what your purpose is. You're going to make the world a better place. You're going to fulfill a destiny, a dharma that you signed up for you know, when, before you even entered your mother's womb. I mean, that, that's the kind of thing that you begin to, to feel inside of yourself, so that you're, you're moving into that stage, but you want to you move into the after, what, what Jung calls the afternoon of your life. You want to move into it armed with a whole, a whole collection of, uh, of practices and beliefs and, and guidelines that, uh, that, are work, that work for you rather than work against you. Success isn't about how your life looks to others. It's about how it feels to you. We realize that being successful isn't about being impressive. It's about being inspired. And, and, and that's what it means to be your true self. It means looking inside yourself and being honest about what you truly enjoy doing because I can promise you that you will never be happy plodding through someone else's idea of success. Success is only meaningful and enjoyable if it feels like your own. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream and that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time or any length of time you wanted to have. And you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. 
you would have every kind of pleasure you could conceive. And after several nights of 75 years of total pleasure each, you would say, well, that was pretty great. But now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Let's have a dream which isn't under control, where something is going to happen to me that I don't know what it's going to be. And uh, you, you would dig that and come out of that and say, wow, that was a, a close shave, wasn't it? Then you would get more and more adventurous, and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. You would dream the dream of living the life that you are actually living today. That would be within the infinite multiplicity of choices you would have, of playing that you weren't God. Because the whole nature of the Godhead, according to this idea, is to play that he's not. So in this idea then, everybody is fundamentally the ultimate reality. Not God in a politically kingly sense, but God in the sense of being the self, the deep down basic whatever there is. And you're all that, only you're pretending you're not. So then, when you're in the way of waking up and finding out who you really are, if you awaken from this illusion and you understand that black implies white, self implies other, life implies death, or shall I say, death implies life, you can feel yourself, not as a stranger in the world, not as something here on probation, not as something that has arrived here by fluke, but you can begin to feel your own existence as absolutely fundamental. There have been things that uh, have been showing up in my life and principles for me to write about and uh, things for me to tell you and share with you that have, um, uh, that have really surprised me. And I've always lived by the principle of Tilopa, the 10th century Sufi master, who said, have a mind that is open to everything and attached nowhere, attached to nothing. And my wife and I always had this um, attitude in, in bringing up our children that um, keep an open mind. And anything that um, you immediately reject, get your ego out of that and just open yourself to the words of Jesus in the New Testament when he said, with God, all things are possible. And I always ask my audience, uh, what does that leave out? What does all things are possible leave out? And obviously the answer is nothing. In the book that I wrote um, for the film, The Shift, it is also called The Shift, um, it has four chapters. From ambition to meaning, moving our lives away from our egos and into a place of, of meaning, what Serena was up here speaking about. It, it's a sense of feeling that you're making a difference in the world. And towards the end of that book, I quoted from um, a man named Joel Goldsmith. He's been a very much of a hero to me. And then from his book, parentheses, <clears throat> parentheses in Eternity, which is what your life is, a parenthesis in eternity. He said these words. He said, then there are those who reach a stage in which they realize the futility of this constant striving and struggling for the things that perish, things which after they are obtained prove to be shadows. It is at this stage that some persons turn from this seeking for things in the outer realm to a seeking for them from God. And that has been probably the major shift in my life, taking the focus in my life off of um, the things, the accomplishments, the acquisitions, the reputation, ownership, which we begin to identify ourselves as, and to begin to recognize that uh, Pierre Tellyard, the great French priest who was excommunicated from the Catholic Church for his outrageous ideas in 1918, um, he said, you're not here as a human being. 
having a spiritual experience, that it's the other way around. And you've all heard it, that we are all infinite spiritual beings having a temporary human experience and beginning to live our life from this spiritual place, its place of spirit where we recognize and identify ourselves not on the basis of what the ego says, which is on the basis of what we have and what we accomplish, what we own and what others think of us, not based on our belief in our separation from each other and most egregiously not based upon our belief in our separation from God. A shift, if you will, to an awareness of, uh, of our own divinity. And from that place, what is possible for all of us?